Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar, uh, which is an introduction to the traffic speed deflectometer, or more simply known as the TSD. Thank you to everyone who's joined us today to hear about this and, and our presenters today will be Kim Sedgwick and Richard Wicks from our systems division at ARP Group. My name is Cathy DeCourris and I'll be your moderator today. I look after the knowledge transfer section within ARP Group, so my contact de details are up there should you need me. And just to run through a few housekeeping items, um, to those who are, who are our regular attendees, you'll know all this, of course, but the approximate running time for today's webinar will be an hour. We'll have about 40 minutes of the actual presentation time and throughout that there will be opportunities for you to ask your questions and have your questions answered about the TSD, which will be around about 20 minutes time. At the conclusion of today's webinar, you'll receive a recording as well as the, a PDF of the presentation and that will be sent to you via email. Just running through a couple of the functions that you uh, may or may not be familiar with. So the questions box is uh, to the left of your screen and that uh, to the left of this particular screen, um, but it's on your control panel and that's where you can type in any questions or comments or anything that you would like to know more about. And please feel free to do that throughout the presentation. You don't have to wait for a particular time. Um, we can we can stop for questions along the way, however we will um, be asking you to, to type them as, as we go. And um, if we ask you to raise your hand or something along those lines, you can see the, the icon to raise your hand um, just here. Okay, enough from me. So our presenters today are Kim Sedgwick, who's our Operations Manager for the Systems Division and her role was the project, the TSD project manager for the acquisition and commissioning stage. Hi Kim. Hi Cathy. Kim, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your role at ARB? Yeah, so as Cathy mentioned, I am the operations manager for systems division, so my primary focus is to make sure we are running um, as efficiently and effectively as we possibly can as a division. Uh, my role on the TSD project was that of basically acquiring and commissioning stages of the TSD. Um, getting it into Australia from Denmark was a large part of that and also just uh, managing the team within Australia uh, to get the TSD up to the standard that we require it at. Terrific. Thanks, Kim. And Richard, Richard Wicks, our Principal Consultant for the Systems Division. Uh, you're the Project Technical Advisor, Richard. That's right, Cathy. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, my role has been uh, having a look at uh, implementing the system here in, in Australia and getting it up and running and uh, making sure it's doing everything it should be. Fantastic. So, Kim, you'll start us off with um, telling us a little bit about where it's come from. Yeah, so just a bit of an introduction to what we're going to be presenting today with the TSD. We're going to go through what it actually is, uh, the specifications around it, what ARB did to further um, I suppose to create some more services out of the current Greenwood system. Uh, Richard will go through a little bit of history on deflection testing and a bit more in depth of how the TSD works from a technical perspective including calibration field trials and what the data is essentially uh, used for. So the ARP TSD um, as presented here, it measures the deflection velocity of the pavement under load. Uh, can we just get a bit of a show of hands uh, from the audience today as who has heard of the TSD so far or who's come across it in the media at all? <laughs> okay. This is uh, we're getting in those answers from, from the listeners. So the TSD provides continuous pavement deflection profiles and it uses a seven Doppler laser system to monitor the response to the pavement to the application of a mass at highway speed. Uh, the TSD is, we're proudly to say, is ARB's largest ever investment in a piece of equipment and it is approximately valued at Australian $3 million, which does not include all the development and labour time which has gone into um, the production of the TSD and the integration of the ARB systems onto the TSD system from Denmark. Okay, Kim, we've got uh, quite a few people that have heard something about the TSD. I think about half our audience today, so 
uh, Ben, Bruce, Brian, um, Gary, Lee, Matt, Pete, oh, Peter, Peter and Peter. Um, <laughs> we've got three, three, three different Peters. Rod, Simon, uh, have all have all mentioned that they've heard something about the TSD. Oh, great. fantastic. Great to see that it's uh, beginning to get its name out in the area. So that's fantastic to hear. Uh, so just a little bit more about the TSD. It is, as we mentioned, manufactured by Greenwood Engineering in Denmark. This TSD is the eighth in the world and the first of its kind into Australasia. Uh, so it's arrived in Australia in January 2014 um, off the back of three uh, five-year contracts with our member organisations, Queensland, TMR, uh, Roads and Maritime Services, New South Wales and the New Zealand Transport Agency. So we'll, it has commenced uh, collection in Queensland and this started in early April 2014. So just a bit of a uh, further background on the TSD acquisition and commissioning side of the project. It certainly was not simple uh, and there's a lot more components to it that people might think when you just, it looks like we're just purchasing a big truck but uh, I can uh, tell you firsthand that it is a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, there's a lot of small, de lots of small details and input from many people across the company, um, and it is brand new technology. So it was certainly very challenging, um, especially given uh, the the time delay and the language barriers that we have between Australia and Denmark as well. Uh, it was quite a quite very unique experience, and we're all very proud to be part of um, this project so far. So just a little bit on the journey, uh, that top left-hand photo is um, Arv's visit to Greenwood Engineering in Denmark during the development. Our manager of data collection services, Chad Manane, ventured over to Denmark to kind of gauge a further understanding of um, the specifications on the TSD and what we're requiring from the piece of equipment. Uh, the one on your top right is the TSD, very white and shiny, um, in, on its arrival into Port Kembla in New South Wales where it was shipped um, into. Uh, that bottom left photo is me very proudly showing the TSD registration plate which uh, came off the back of a few hurdles that we had to um, get past and it was just kind of demonstrating that in a project such as this which is quite difficult you really do need to celebrate the small wins as you progress with the project. And the bottom left finally is its main voyage as it was leaving our ARB Vermont South office and heading up to Queensland for its first round of data collection. So just going a little bit further into the specifications um, of the TSD, so it's a seven Doppler laser system um, with uh, lasers spaced at 100 mil, 200 mil, 300 and so on as pictured on your screen. Um, we did actually change the uh, 600 millimeter laser from the 750 position um, with some of the Greenwood engineers um, that were visiting from Denmark, which we'll go into the next slide. Uh, the TSD is able to operate at 80 kilometers per hour and it's approximately 11.25 meters long, just the trailer itself. So that photo there on the right hand side is the uh, Doppler arrangement uh, within, the, within the trailer. So as you can see it's uh, quite a sophisticated piece of equipment and you can actually see the laser points if you look closely uh, just towards the back um, of that device, which Richard, no, you're not gonna, sorry. So we're just uh, highlighting for you there the the dot point uh, the Doppler lasers there the three at the rear and then further forward of this photo there's some uh, uh, more underneath that. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, so here we had um, as part of this um, acquisition commissioning stage we had three engineers visit from Greenwood Engineering. Um, Early on, originally we had the project manager Soren visit who um, helped us through some of the initial calibration and benchmarking phases that we went through. And then we had David and Jack come over uh, who were kind of more specific engineers, Jack being a software development engineer and David being more on the component level side. Uh, so this um, photo is demonstrating David just changing that Doppler laser position um, on the bottom left there from the 750 to the 600 mil um, positioning. Just on that, Kim, uh, just for those of us who are unfamiliar with the, with the terms, uh, can you explain to us what a Doppler is? I think Richard's probably better uh, to answer that question. Terrific. Thanks, Richard. I think you're jumping the gun a little, Kathy, there. Oh, but, sorry. Uh, we can talk about it now. 
a Doppler laser is just a, a type of laser. You are probably all familiar with laser pointers that you press the button and it projects a, a red spot or a spot of different colour on the wall or wherever you're pointing it. Doppler's is a type of laser. It has a visible a red spot that you can see, but it operates on that Doppler principle, which is probably best described from an audible sense. Is if you're uh, you've probably heard this, you're standing in a position and you can hear a uh, ambulance or a fire engine coming from a distance as it comes towards you. You hear one pitch of the siren as it goes past you. The pitch changes. So the Doppler laser itself emits a, a laser light of a particular frequency, and then it, the return signal is a different frequency. And by knowing that, you can actually uh, make a measurement of the velocity. Terrific. Thank you, Richard. I'm, I'm sure that's cleared it up for, for everyone because even I can understand that. Thanks. <laughs> uh, just, just further another point to make uh, while the Greenwood team were visiting uh, is that uh, they were quite helpful in, in assisting us in building the integration into our uh, Hawkeye system with the Greenwood system. So it's quite an important part of the process was to um, have the Greenwood engineers over visiting ARB as well. So that's just David further adjusting um, the laser position there. So further on the uh, specifications, the TSD operates with a consistent 10 ton load on the rear axle. Um, we have purchased a single axle prime mover, which is a Mercedes Actros as well. Uh, two ballast loads, the large one is pictured there on your right, and that is actually filled with uh, smaller lead blocks, which can be removed to adjust the load um, depending on on what your requirements are at the time, and then there's a smaller one just behind the rear axle as well. So at all times we have two ARB staff operating the TSD. We have our dedicated driver, Rob Squires, um, and then our, one of our senior surveyors, uh, Paul Van Dam, who are both very experienced now with the operation and will be uh, the operators for the duration of um, the contracts. Uh, so all the surveying systems are able to be controlled by the operator situated next to the driver. No one is actually in the trailer itself at the time of operation, just from a, obviously a road safety perspective. Uh, so on the arbification side, um, we are running a complete Hawkeye system, as some of you will be familiar with, with our running of our network survey vehicles. Um, we do have five cameras integrated into the TSD, three forward facing, which are dash mounted and two, as you can see there, a little bit on the rear of the TSD. Uh, we have a five laser profiler, which is measuring texture and roughness. We've also implemented automatic crack detection, um, which in the case of the TSD is using the laser crack measuring system, um, which is also used for rotting. So the gypsy track, which measures a cross slope and gradient, is also fitted to the TSD. Uh, the TSD, obviously, it sounds like it collects a lot of data. It does certainly collect a lot of data. We're collecting around 700 gigabytes of data per day or 151 terabytes of data over the course of the year. So, and on top of that, those five cameras are collecting around 27 million image, image frames sorry, per year. So it's a lot of data to handle, and that's one of the challenges that we also have with the running of the system is how our um, members who are getting the data are going to be able to handle this amount coming into their systems. Wow, Kim, it sounds like it does it all. Well, we hope it does. Um, we are kind of planning on it being the ultimate survey vehicle. Uh, it does have a lot of capacity that um, the member organisations would running separate surveys to complete a lot of these tasks previously. Like some of them are running a cracking survey and then separate to that they're running an imaging survey. So this, uh, so the TSD basically involves all those different components into the one vehicle including the strength testing, which is something entirely unique um, within Australia. Terrific. It's a real one-stop shop. It's a one-stop shop. It certainly sounds like it. It's, a, it's amazing. Okay, so I think uh, we're moving on to some questions. Yep, so it is question time. Okay, thank you. Um, so as, as previously um, stated, please don't hesitate to, to type in your questions in the questions box um, and just a reminder we will be emailing out the recording of this webinar as well as the presentation material um, later on this afternoon. Um, we've got some questions that have come through and I, I think we might be we might be getting into into some, some technical um, 
areas, but we'll, we'll just have a look at some of the, the before we, we preempt Richard's presentation. Um, Manul's asking, what is the range of load it can apply? 10 tonne on the rear wheel axle. 10 tonne on the rear yep. wheel axle. So what it's set up. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you, could, you can change it, but that's what we've set up for our condition. Yeah, and there are obviously some limitations with heavy vehicle loading limits and mm. things like that, which we've had to overcome, especially on a single axle. Um, and the state road agencies use will have different requirements for the single axles. So um, 10 tonne, we're hoping to keep it consistent in remaining at that for all, for all members. Um, can you tell us, uh, Brad's asking what the minimum speed, uh, what the minimum speed is. So, for example, if it's held up in traffic. Yeah, the, the specifications from the manufacturers from Greenwood indicate that really you want to be going at least 40 kilometres in an hour okay. to get reliable data. So, yeah, minimum speed of 40 for the TSD, for the deflection side of things. Uh, other systems obviously have different uh, minimum speed requirements or no speed requirements. Terrific. A uh, question here from Natalie. Can the TSD collect pavement width and lane width? Uh, there are systems on there. The, uh, it's been interesting. There's some questions coming up about the auto crack detection system and we mentioned it can also measure rutting, uh, which it can. It can also measure uh, identifying lane marking as well and pick up uh, lane width from that. That system, if you like, takes uh, at a very small interval transverse profiles of pavement, which you build up to generate a 3D mm -hmm. plot of the pavement. So you actually get, you know, rutting it becomes a, a thin line of 4,000 points, which you can uh, calculate uh, the rut depth from. It also, the auto crack detection system can measure the reflective properties of the surface of yep. the pavement. So the white lines or the line marking usually are more reflective, so they stand out. And from that information, you can actually work out lane width automatically. Okay. Uh, we, we are getting quite a few questions coming through, which is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you to, to all of you out there. Um, we'll, we'll just take a couple more at this point, and then uh, we might save some for once Richard does the more technical part of the presentation. Yeah, the yeah. I think we'll cover some of those, but I guess yeah, it's an introduction to the TSD. We won't be going into uh, all the, the nitty-gritty, but we'll certainly give a good indication of what is possible. Obviously, it's a big vehicle. Uh, yes. not, 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 not that uh, good for maybe running around an urban network with uh, a lot of cul-de-sacs and the like, or, mm. uh, you know, or wind, super windy roads. I see a question there from Peter Mears about uh, you know, on hilly country and the like. So there, there will be some limitations to the system. Thank you, Richard. Okay, should we move on to your presentation and then we can do keep the questions coming through, um, everyone. We, as I said, we are getting quite a few, which is which is great, um, and we will look to, to group the questions where we can and, and be able to provide some answers to you. And if we don't get to them throughout this presentation, then um, we can follow up by email afterwards with some um, written responses to that. So do keep the questions coming through. Very good. And speaking of questions... <laughs> wow, <laughs> Richard, what a segue. We uh, it, have one for you. This is going to be a poll. Terrific. This is going to be a poll. So... so um, we, it's time for us to ask you a question. So this will come up on your screen and the question we are asking you is how many Doppler lasers does the ARB TSD have? So you would have heard earlier, I've opened this poll so you can select your answer uh, from the multiple choice you have there. And uh, just waiting for everyone to to answer this one. We we look like we have a very attentive audience because uh, about eighty percent, I think, have chosen the right answer. We're just going to wait for a few more people to to submit their votes. <clears throat> There might be a small prize in it for you if that will encourage <laughs> the last few voters. Okay, so we 
almost have everyone in. We might just close that poll off now and we'll share with you the right answer. And the answer is, and I'm sure as you said most have picked this up, is B. There's seven. Terrific. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, there'll be a couple of op uh, other opportunities to answer uh, some questions too. But let's move on from there. All right, as we jump around a bit there. So we just want to look, I guess we want to just discuss what's been done in the past, particularly here in Australia when it comes to measuring deflection. And for those of you who are involved with pavements, you're probably well aware of the different techniques that have been used. You know, if you went back 10, 20 or more years, or maybe it's still used in some areas now, you have the Benkelman beam, which involved you know, driving basically a truck, uh, not over the beam, so to say, but driving the uh, dual wheels over it and measuring the deflection. And with time, you know, we get a new direction in technology, we get advancements are made. So, you know, you can do smarter things. I and mean, we went from a static Benkelman beam test to basically one that we could go on the move. Not very fast, but it was better than being static. We got the pavement strength evaluator there from Vic Roads. There's a paved F from TMR in uh, Queensland. Our mess in New South Wales have deflector graphs as well. So, you know, you go to, from four to eight kilometres an hour uh, using the same principle with the Benkelman beam for measuring deflection. Or, which seems to be quite common now in Australia, we use an FWD, which again is a, a static measure, but especially for project level work, it seems to be the favoured tool. And on some networks it's used as well, so you can do that. But as we've discussed, being a static system, well, you have some problems in that they're very slow to operate. It gives you a reduced coverage, it takes time to get around networks, even sometimes with project level jobs, depending on the spacing between test points and the like. You have safety issues as you're not moving along or moving at a slower speed than the, uh, the traffic around you, and that can add up a lot with cost, so it's expensive. So there's certainly a, an opening there for having a system that could operate at faster speeds and collect information on the deflection of the pavement. And that's where we've got the highway speed deflectometer. Now, Kim mentioned already, I think, we've got about a top speed of 80 kilometres an hour, but you can imagine that's pretty quick when you compare it to some of these old systems that are very snail-like in pace. So the other thing too is you're getting 100% coverage of your network or your road system now, rather than having point testing, although your deflector graphs will give you a continuous information. So we talked a little bit already and this is about as technical as we'll get today about the Doppler lasers and, and how they work. You can imagine what we have here if we look in the maybe I can operate the pointer here. The arrow. So up here we've got our 10 ton wheel load or if over one wheel it'll be five ton. So we've got a load, we're driving at a velocity, so it's our 80 um, kilometers an hour. Now, as we go along, why does this do this to me? Okay. All right, so as we go along, uh, the wheel is uh, pushing down on the pavement. So it's deflecting the pavement and there's a velocity to that deflection. And that's what the Doppler laser is actually measuring. It measures the velocity of the surface of the pavement after it gets as it's getting put under load uh, continually. Uh, and then from that, we've got, uh, if you can have a look at this, you've got your deflection uh, velocity profile. And then with that information, you can actually work out the deflection slope, because we know what the deflection velocity going down into the pavement is. We know what velocity or what speed we're doing as we're driving the vehicle forward. So from that, we can actually calculate something called the deflection slope. Now that's where it, where it gets interesting because people are interested not so much maybe in the deflection slope, but they want to know about what, what's happening with the deflection of the pavement itself. So what do you do with those measurements? Now there's a variety of different ways and I'm sure 
we're going to just mention four here. It's just to show that there's different people treat these uh, readings that you get from the TST differently. So the Greenwood and the Danish Road Directorate, who obviously would work together to uh, develop the system, they look at uh, have a model to convert the TSD slope into a deflection bowl, and they do it in one way. Uh, TRL in the UK, will they look at the TSD slope values and correlate those with deflectograph values. Uh, here in Australia and at ARP, uh, Wayne Muller and John Roberts have come out with a neat way to uh, calculate the uh, deflection bowl using an integ in, uh, integration method uh, to get deflection. And then, you know, others, uh, some Polish gentlemen there, Zofka, and they use something else again. So I'm sure as time goes on, actually, there'll be a lot of uh, other different techniques that ones will try to apply to this TSD data to actually try and uh, or come out with different measures of deflection or, or emulating different um, systems. Thank you, Richard. Um, we've actually had some uh, a number of questions in, in relation to, to that particular topic, so um, I believe you've answered those. Now we have a, another question for our audience. So you're familiar with how this works and the question is what does a Doppler laser measure? Does it measure roughness, deflection, macro texture or deflection velocity? So we're getting a few answers through. So Richard, while, while um, people are answering that question, um, just to cover off some of the early questions that we had, yes. uh, Dr. Wei Lu asked about um, the, have I've done any work on the correlation of TSD deflections with four-wheel drive? Well, all in way. Sorry. Yeah. Four-wheel drive. Uh, <laughs> apologies for that. With FWD deflections or beam deflections. Yes, yes, and that was uh, John Roberts and uh, and then uh, Wayne Muller from TMO, who's on secondment with ARP at the moment. They've looked into it a bit and come up with uh, some you know methodology of trying to replicate that. But I must say, at this point in time, it depends who you talk to about how successful some of these things are. I will actually show you some an example coming up of where we've taken the TSD data and then uh, applied the uh, the Roberts curve to generate a deflection bowl, and you'll, you'll be able to see. But it, you know, it's just an example. Uh, you know, some people prefer one method to another, and I think there's going to be a bit of debate about this for, for a little bit of time. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we'll just close that um, poll off now, and we'll share those results. Ninety-five percent deflection velocity. Well, oops, if you would have said that, you would be correct. Terrific. Hey, why doesn't my thing work? <laughs> anyway, very good. All right, so let's move on, shall we? All right, so there's another picture of the TSD. We've seen it a few times. This time it's got the nice little ARB logo uh, on the side in its finished format. And uh, I guess it looks like just a refrigerated box almost from a distance. So what we'd like to do now is actually have a look at some schematics because that's probably the best way of looking at what's actually inside uh, the trailer itself. So here's an overhead view as we look down upon the truck and you can see uh, here some of the different components. There's actually, let me just get my little pointer. Here, my little arrow. So here is there's a couple of different rooms. There's a little room here in the front of the uh, trailer. In there, we've got some inverters and some lead acid batteries and the like. You can run the system without uh, power. There's a generator that comes from the back of the truck to give it the power normally. Uh, so that's where uh, that some of the power electronics are. Now you walk into the the rear end of it. Uh, we have some cabinets uh, up here which contain the electronics for not only the TSD but also the ARB equipment that's been fitted to it. Uh, we have a little desk and a seat and a computer where we can look at the data. Uh, that desk is not used during acquisition of um, data because of safety means, but 
when the vehicle stopped, you can interrogate the system and process data. And this here down the bottom, which is the Doppler laser housing and assembly, which we'll have a look at. You can see each of them weigh quite a bit, and then when we're calculating the uh, the weight for over the rear axle to get that 10 ton, uh, all these weights have to uh, be taken into consideration. All right, here it is from the side. Uh, we have a lot of dimensions in there, telling us how long the truck and trailer is. But uh, as you can see here, um, we've got it towards the rear of there. We've got the ballast under the the uh, trailer, but above that we have the Doppler system and arrangement. It's actually movable uh, in within the truck itself because we need to do some calibrations and we have to, to do that we have to measure loaded and, and both unloaded surfaces so uh, it needs to be able to move. And then at the rear of the truck we've got a measuring wheel as well for distance measurement and velocity measurement. Certainly um, illustrates why, why it's so big needs to hold um, quite a bit. Yeah, it does, it does. And it's not to say that it's uh, full by any means. Uh, you can fit some other things uh, in there as well. But it's not a cramped environment. There's plenty of good space to work. It's very nicely designed, I must say. So here's a picture of the, uh, the measurement beam itself. Uh, you'll see this little arrangement on the side. It kind of looks like a bent snake. That's all the cabling because, it, as I said, it needs to move, it needs to be slid forward from that position as part of the calibration uh, method. Uh, on top of the beam here are fans, quite strong fans because temperature is a big consideration. Uh, there's also an air conditioning unit in the back of the, the trailer to maintain a constant temperature and then you've got these fans to blow the cooler air onto the uh, measurement arrangements. We've got the lasers situated at different points along the beam and we want to make sure that there's a uniform temperature or, or a temperature that we can maintain all the time during testing so that doesn't affect the results, uh, like warping of the, of the arrangement. That it's a metal uh, housing, so that could be a problem if you don't look after it. Here's a distance measuring wheel. Uh, here at the back, it's a nice little arrangement here. Actually, it's forced down onto the road, so there's a bit of pressure. Uh, the, the guts of it there in the little pink circle is the DMI, or the Distance Measuring Instrument. That's uh, 20,000 pulses per revolution it measures. So we can get a very accurate measurement of speed and distance uh, using that, which is required for uh, the system to take its measurements. So at, um, because at about 80 kilometres an hour, it's taking a reading every 20 millimetres. The Doppler lasers, I should have mentioned before, run at just under one kilohertz, or they take a thousand readings per second. Okay. Time I think, a... uh, yeah, Richard, I think you um, you made a point of talking about the, the length of the trailer. Um, so this one's just a, a type in your answer into the questions box. Um, how long is the TSD trailer? A, B, C or D, 10.25 metres, 7.5 metres, 11.25 or 14.2. So we just want the trailer, not with the truck. Just the trailer. Okay. 11.25 is featuring... And well, this looks like everyone's listened pretty well. Yeah, or I had a look at that schematic because 11.25 is the answer. Yes. Terrific. Thank you to everyone for responding. We might, uh, is it worth stopping here for a couple more questions, Richard? Uh, yeah, we, we can. We we've, can. Got, um, we've got a very active audience, so I, I don't want to leave them hanging with their questions for too sure. long. Um, we've got a, a number of questions from Carmen. I'll start with, are there any Osroad guidelines on TSD collection? Not yet. They're being worked on. Being worked on. Terrific. Thank you. And Carmen had another one in regards to temperature. Pavement tend to be stronger or less responsive during hot days. How is that translated to represent average strength for the whole year? Yeah, I'm probably not in a position to answer that in a, in a um, scientific manner, but 
What I can say is that the system actually has with it uh, temperature probes or it measures the surface temperature of the, the pavement yep. and also the air temperature as well uh, amongst other things and within the trailer itself. So the whole idea of that is to be able to take into um, temperature effects into account when you know, taking strength measurements or deflection, looking at deflection and the like. So uh, yeah, that uh, seems it's not not a pavements engineer per se, that's all I'll okay. say. Fair <laughs> enough, no worries. Thank you Richard. Okay, back to it. Okay, all right, we've just a few more slides to, to go. Uh, one of the interesting things was uh, to calibrate the system. As I said, you uh, need to actually find a site. And this, this was rather interesting. You need a section of road that's straight, flat, and about one and a half kilometres long. And you reckon we could find it no. anywhere close by? <laughs> uh, it, it was a little harder than we originally thought it would be the case. And we worked with Greenwood and they've since said, well, you know, 1,500 metres long is the ideal. If you can get a kilometre or so, uh, that, that'll do. And we were able to pick uh, a piece of road on the Monash Freeway that uh, met that goal. So we've, uh, after we'd done the calibration, which as I said involved moving that uh, laser arrangement forward in the truck to a couple of different positions to work out what they call relatively relative angles of the lasers. Uh, we're able to take it out and collect some uh, data. Now this is the uh, little uh, AVI graphic that I was talking about before. This is uh, showing some of this, the slope measurements and then the calculated deflection and the maximum deflection as calculated using the Muller-Roberts method. And this is for several repeat runs. So you get in your second screen there, that's the simulated deflection bowl. And as you can see, as you move along, this uh, site was about six, seven, eight kilometres long. You can see that there's four, five or six runs there over the top of each other. You know, there's an occasional blip here and there, but the system was producing some nice repeatable data and giving deflections that, that were in the ballpark that might be expected. Now, one of, one of the hard things here is that we don't actually have a you know, standard or as yet or another TSD to compare against. So uh, we're looking at, as we'll discuss, looking at different uh, devices to see that we're getting reasonable uh, results that we might expect. Anyway, we get more of the same. For Uh, we did take it out to the Eastern Freeway where there's some PACE data was uh, collected as well and we did a, a correlation, not a correlation, a comparison between the two and some of these it's a little small the, the text but we've got TSD, multiple TSD runs and then compared with some multiple PACE runs as well and this is all the thing, you know, uh, you, you, you can Take, get measurements that are, are similar, but you know, no one as yet has been able to replicate you know, perfect deflectometer data from the TSD or FWD bolts from the TSD. So, but what we see here, using the modelling, we get the same trends and the same in the same magnitudes as expected. So we were quite happy with what we saw with that data. Uh, two, what we wanted to do was say, all right, we've uh, got a test loop, we've run it around the loop, we might be getting particular readings here and there. How do we know wh why that's the case, where it's stronger and less strong somewhere else? So what we did was uh, we got a local contractor with a GPR, and this is an air coupled GPR, and we had that run along with the TSD uh, to uh, have a look at what's actually under the pavement so we could look at you know, the results in the TSD and if it indicated a weak pavement, or well, we could look at the pavement structure under pavement surface. So at this stage we just we've talked a lot about the TSD. We were going to see if we can get uh, okay no we're going to minimize this. Can I do this? Okay. Sorry folks we had to uh, we have to go to um, little video here, okay, a little bit of an ARB intro, 
Well, I did ask for some some uh, video to be combined together, and I got a real production. Yeah, and I got that's it back. terrific. So uh, here is uh, some testing with the um, TSD, and I guess what it's highlighting here is uh, the TSD here in the truck in the in the far lane. You know, it's travelling at traffic speed. It's not holding up anything, and behind it is the uh, the, the vehicle with the GPR. So we we're running them behind each other uh, to get on the same day so we can get direct comparable results from or make direct comparisons from one to the other. And here it just comes again down the, the hill. So again I guess you know it's not you don't need any special uh, safety setup, uh, you don't close lanes or anything, the truck just drives along mm. you know, the traffic speed. Okay. And again I think we know who we are so <laughs> we, uh, I'll kill that and we'll get back to the Okay, so that was the TSD in action, some live footage. Now we've been getting a lot of data out of this and we're looking at different ways we can represent it and we can generate some KMLs. This is something that uh, Wayne Moore has been working on for us up in our Brisbane office, but here we've got you know an overlay on top of Google Map of uh, the different levels of deflection. So, um, you know, when you're in Google Earth, you can rotate it around and the like and, and see things and add different bits of data. So, you know, it's just a neat way of mm -hmm. looking at uh, data in, on a project level maybe. I doubt if you want to do your whole 20,000 kilometres uh, <laughs> review it that way, but it doesn't take much to generate these outputs. Yeah, and it looks amazing. So, well, that's nice. So, Kim had mentioned also, we've got this big truck, we've got a TSD in it, but we've also got other equipment because we want to make it a one-stop shop for collecting data. That way agencies can combine multiple surveys into the one, which is economic savings, of course. So we're looking with this, we're measuring roughness, rutting, texture, and you know, we're collecting GPS information or DGPS, uh, road geometry imaging, and then we've got the auto crack detection system, which is also giving us uh, things like uh, line marking or pavement width if we want to and uh, transverse profile measurements for rutting as well uh, to, a, to a high level of uh, accuracy. So, where is it now? Where is it now? Yes, yeah, so it's currently up uh, in Queensland uh, completing the TMR data collection component for this year, which is approximately 20,000 kilometres. Uh, so this was actually as of Thursday last week, as you can see by the last update received. Um, it was just out uh, in Boat Desert, in suppose southeast Queensland. Uh, so we do have our development team is working on kind of some tracking technology uh, for the TSD and also for the rest of our data collection fleet. So we're able to track uh, where they're at, which is fantastic. Terrific. And where does it go next? So once it finishes the Queensland surveys at the start of July, it will uh, head south to New South Wales um, to work for RMS. Um, once it's completed that, it will be shipped to uh, New Zealand for this commencement of the New Zealand surveys, which will start in January 2015. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so questions. We have quite a few of them. <laughs> um, so, if, again, if we don't get to your question today, then we will follow up by email after, after today's webinar and, of course, um, you know, don't hesitate to contact Richard or Kim or, or anyone from the ARB Systems team. Okay, we'll just run through a few. Bruce is asking if the Roberts 2013 paper is available publicly. Uh, pretty sure, yeah. We yes. can get a copy of that out. Yeah, so we can get a copy of that. Terrific. Um, no Doppler laser at zero millimetres for maximum deflection, asks Nick. Interesting, yeah, no, it doesn't use no. that. That's... Uh, what is the difference between ADC and LCMS? Uh -huh. <laughs> ACD is LCMS with a bit more. So. So, I suppose LCMS laser crack measuring system is a form of automatic crack detection. That's, that's probably well, it's a system that a lot of people are aware of. So what ARB has done is integrated into our system, but 
what LCMS will do, the manufacturers of equipment, is they just generate, say, a crack map or identify a defect, then it's up to the integrator of the system to work out how to report that and identify it. So uh, it's taken those crack maps and other outputs to customise them basically to meet uh, road agency needs and uh, to you know, focus on particular ways of analysing the data. So, you know, it's the core of the ACD system, it's just that we've added uh, extra smarts to the LCMS. Okay. Um, uh, we've got a question from Natalie asking, is the GPS set up for the Southern Hemisphere? Yeah, we're all okay. I mean, we're, we're all glow NAS, we're everything NAS, we've got you know, <laughs> tracking gazillion sets. Okay. It's, it's all set up. Uh, and it's real time differentially corrected as well. We, I think, Peter, we've answered um, or we've, you know, shown how the data will be presented and how it can be interpreted and used. I think. Um, well, so we've looked at a couple yeah. of ways. I think there's uh, quite a few options, and it, with time, uh, you know, that'll. You know, if someone asked a question earlier, was it common about is there a standard yet for use in Australia? And I think some of those things need to be uh, will be addressed in that, in like a standard output format and the like. Okay. Uh, which leads on to when will the data become available? Well, that entirely depends on when we complete the surveys. Yeah. So. It's, it's ongoing. I mean, for each of the agencies who are now uh, like. In Queensland, the data is collected, will be processed and forwarded on to them uh, as a continuous process. Yeah. You know, we're not going to wait till they've finished 20,000 kilometres and then... <laughs> but having said that, some decisions have to be made as what format in particular they would like. Terrific. You okay to take a few more questions, Richard? Yes, I've got my water you bottle. I'm having plenty of fantastic. drinks. Fantastic. Um, we have a question from Rod asking, are inner wheel path measurements through changing equipment to other side of the trailer? Okay, yeah, that's maybe one thing we didn't mention there. Yeah. We're actually taking measurements only in the outer wheel path. Uh, the, the device could be set up with uh, another uh, array of Doppler lasers to measure on the inner wheel path, uh, but you no, know, the equipment already costs in the millions. Uh, to do that was cost prohibitive and you know it may be that you know down the track uh, depending on how it's used it might be a modification for the future yeah. uh, or you know maybe research project to see you know changing the measurement to the other side of the, the path, inner wheel path might be just sorry just further just further on that we did actually have discussions quite early on in the project um, with the state road agencies and um, other member organisations of whether they wanted that option available and at the moment because it's such a new technology um, it was best to just kind of keep it kind of simple from the start and then once we progress we can expand um, to both wheel paths which also obviously up their data <laughs> as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Question from overseas, uh, Dave is asking what's new about the crack detection technology? Is this different or better than what we have had in the past? Will it work on New Zealand chip seals? Okay, well, I, what I can say from experience, we started implementing that technology two years ago now, and one of our big concerns was performance on chip seals. And mm -hmm. like New Zealand, we've got uh, a lot of chip seal compared to uh, other type. And we actually trialled the system before we bought it. And I'll say, while not perfect, it does an okay job on, on chip seal. We're still learning. You know, we've uh, done a couple of big projects now, one with Vic Roads. We've operated across our whole network now, and uh, same in South Australia. We've covered their whole network. So we've learnt a lot uh, about what their system can and can't do and how to deal with things such as false positives and the like to, to make the data more, not usable, but more accurate. Um, and yeah, so yeah, it's progressed a long way from just manual assessment of images of the pavement. Good-o. 
We have another question. They just keep coming through, which is fantastic. So we'll take uh, a few more questions to see us through to uh, our hour. Um, we have a question in regards to does the TSD measure OWP? That's out of work path. That's in a work path. Yeah. Terrific. Okay. Yeah. So um, yep. Yep. How roughness and texture data collection correlate with current device used to collect data for Vic roads? Yeah, same, same technology and the like is mounted underneath the trailer. So same spacing, same it's the same system. Uh, it's mounted presently on the vehicle used to do Vic roads, it's the same equipment as mounted under the truck. Okay, we've got a couple of questions in regards to correlation of TSD deflection data with FWD data. That's uh, they're, they're good questions, but um, I'm going to defer those to a, a pavements expert. Uh, maybe we can get them followed up. Okay, great. And uh, are there any height restrictions? So. Um, how high, how high the truck after all the devices are fitted, would it be restrained due to any height restrictions? No, there's nothing on the top apart from the, uh, the, the flat TS, uh, TS, the GPS uh, aerial. Everything else is mounted below the uh, trailer height. So, um, no, I don't think that'd be... Yes, no it's problem. just a standard um, semi-height, basically. The only, um, I suppose, measurement that we had to be quite careful of in the acquisition stage was the width of the trailer. Um, every other TSD that's been built is 200, sorry, 2,550 millimetres wide, whereas the ARB TSD is just uh, 2.5 metres, um, which um, makes it a lot easier to get permits and things like that. Otherwise, we'd have to be operating with further access requirements. Um, Brad's asking us about, and we've had a, a number of questions in regards to, to high speeds and, and lower speeds, um, but travelling at high speeds, does the pavement condition roughness influence the data? Uh, it could. What, what we didn't mention in the presentation was that arrangement uh, where all the, the lasers are fitted to actually sits on a servo system. So you've got a mechanism for if the truck bounces, uh, the position of the measurement uh, beam, if you like, actually moves with, with the truck. So if I can imagine if the, the road was so rough that the, uh, the trailer was bouncing out, of, I think I can't remember, it's plus or minus 50 mil adjustment, if it fell outside that measurement uh, range, adjustment range, well then you'd probably end up with some invalid data. But, uh, you know, for the general normal roads, the automatic adjustment should keep everything in range. It's the same with the, um, the measuring wheel at the back. That's why there's actually some force on the wheel to keep the wheel in contact with the ground uh, rather than have it loose when you hit something rough. It would just bounce. Mm. Okay. Uh, back on the axle load, is it possible to customise that? It, it is possible to customise it, as I mentioned um, during my presentation, that uh, ballast load under the um, front of the rear axle um, is underneath the steel plate there is a bunch of lead blocks that are about 45 kilos each um, so if we add more weight inside the trailer we can just adjust it. Uh, for the uh, road agencies that we're completing these contracts for currently we have um, agreed with them that we will operate at a 10 ton axle load to keep the consistency up for the duration of the contracts to make sure that there's not that comparability or um, I suppose inaccuracies with the data if we do change it um, from one to another. Yeah, we, we've also got some strain gauges on the rear axles to, to help us with uh, uh, measurements and the like. Uh, there also is the ballast at the back. There's well, also, yeah, the ballast. Uh, adjusted. So, so, yeah, it is uh, adjustable. Okay. We'll just take a, a couple more questions. So if you do have any, any burning questions that you would like answered, um, now's the time to, to type them in. Um, but we'll probably just take three more questions. Um, uh, there's a question here in regards to um, when you talked about, Richard, the GPR, 
the GPR was behind the TSD, um, can it be incorporated into the... Yes, yeah, into the, uh, as yep. we said, it's a big truck, we fit a lot of stuff on it, in it and under it. And one of the things we're looking at is uh, also how we could maybe incorporate a, TS, a GPR uh, measurement into the TSD as well. So that's something for the future, but we're, we're looking at it in, at present uh, to be able to get that capability. And uh, there's a question in regards to the weather. Again, um, during rainfall, can the TSD still operate due to surface water or spray? Uh, I like that question. No, uh, we can't because of the, the lasers. Uh, well, it's a laser-based measurement system and the reflectivity of the surface will be affected by the wetness. So uh, we can't take measurements in wet conditions. So just further on that, we have actually, with the way that the scheduling is working with the state road agencies and obviously NZTA as well, is that we've actually got it scheduled so that we are surveying in their area in their historically dry months. Yeah. yeah, terrific. So we'd want the road to be, uh, yeah, probably uh, damp is probably okay, but no spray. As long as there's no spray coming off the road, probably, probably okay. But that's something we'll, we'll have to work out, uh, we'll find as we uh, get more experience in using the equipment. Okay, we've had uh, a question in regards to the cost, um, of course, um, for data collection. Um, just throw that one over. <laughs> <laughs> Not there's, an so, there's, so many, there's so many uh, components. components to it, depending on you know, where it is. Yeah how much it is. So at this stage, now if someone was interested, maybe if they could send in a, um, what they were interested in and we can yeah. request for a, an average price, we can uh, do that. Terrific. Um, so who is the best person to contact? Yeah, so uh, we've got a website set up for the TSD on the uh, um, general webpage, so you can follow that link there. Uh, otherwise, if you have any further questions, uh, Richard or myself are more than happy to answer them. The project now has actually been handed over to our manager of data collection um, services, which is Chad Manay. Um, so he's actually project managing all the um, contracts that we currently have. Um, but since he's quite busy with that, Richard and I will take all your questions. So, terrific. Well, we have had uh, a very active audience and, I mean, it is uh, an exciting first for ARM and for this side of the world, so um, it is great to hear a little bit more about how we we got to be in possession of the TSD and, and the things that it, that it can do. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us uh, for our TSD webinar today. Um, we appreciate your input and your interaction and as stated we'll, um, we'll get back to the questions that we haven't been able to answer um, due to time restrictions today. But thank you again for your participation. Yeah, thanks thanks for very listening. much everyone.